the college by the lake, meeting the personalities and discussing the issues that affect all of Coeur d'Alene and the Inland Northwest. We are the North Idaho College Public Forum. And now, here's your moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. It's a very special privilege to be with you today. This is a milestone in the history of the North Idaho College Public Forum. It is very hard to believe that we have been on the air starting our 20th year, so this year we'll be celebrating throughout the year our 20th anniversary. And in doing so, we want to particularly thank KSPS TV Channel 7 in Spokane, the PBS station that has been with us and have provided us this opportunity for these many years. In the last two or three years, we've also been on KUID TV PBS in Moscow, Idaho, and we're grateful for that opportunity to air uh, through that channel also. And starting off our 20th year, I thought about how we could not only celebrate the 20th year, but also recognize the role of the education at North Idaho College that is the headquarters for this particular program. And I've invited to the program a former student at North Idaho College. And that's why we're in education, to educate and to see our students go out and be successful. Our guest today, and again <coughs> next week for a two-part series, is Mr. Gary Hall. Gary, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Tony. Gary is an artist. He graduated from the art program at North Idaho College, and he also has gone out in the field and has been very successful as a young artist. And that's what we're going to talk about today, Gary, with you on this program, uh, the whole field of art and the area that you're particularly involved in. And of course, it's in the field of painting. Uh, and then next week, we're going to come back and we're going to show uh, a number of your works. And I'm highly impressed <coughs> with what you have done. And I know that the viewing audience will find this enjoyable, too. So again, I welcome you to the program. Thank you. I'd like to start with your background and let you tell our viewers some things uh, about art. And I want to delve into the, the thinking of an artist. You're still a, a, obviously a young man, but would you go back and tell us uh, what really motivated you? I know you've gone through some even financial sacrifices to work in your field and realize it. Where did it come from? Where was the, the first drive to be an artist? Well, I think, I think it's something that um, everyone has, a, even as young as a child with me, um, everybody starts out um, something that definitely stands out with them, a, a definite interest. And it was always artwork for me. And uh, since I was, since I can remember, my mom, uh, my dad have always said, you know, you're, you know, you're doing. I mean, I was three or four years old, and I'm, I'm doing, you know, houses and this and that. And so there was an automatic spark, you know, early on. So that to do the artwork that carried on all through school. I mean, that was something I knew I was good at. Um, I, I didn't always know that that was something I wanted to do as far as uh, have a regular income because of artwork, but. Um, I, I went through uh, junior high, high school, and, and eventually right into college. And um, I still really wasn't sure I, that that was definitely what I wanted to do. Um, it, you know, it takes a lot of um, faith in yourself to, to do something like that. And uh, I don't think I was really ready at the time, right out of, I graduated in 87. And um, immediately started uh, just working, get an income. And I, I actually gave up the artwork for quite some time. I have to interrupt you here <clears throat> because I, I've, I've interviewed a number of artists. I'm thinking one in Spokane in particular is a very special person. And she told me that when she got away from her artwork uh, for a period of time, which she does, and she does uh, paintings as well as other kinds of work, she says she loses her center. Mm -hmm. And she gets very busy in her daily life. And she says, I just simply have to get back to my work. Is that a similar experience you have? Could you indicate that there was a period in which you did not do that? Yeah, if, if, if you're not... I... I really believe, and it's something that I've um, I've been taught. If you're not doing what you want to do, if you're not, if you have a talent for something and you're not doing it, you, I think you're going to really be frustrated with other aspects of your life as far as an income working. Um, with me, if I if I stay with the artwork, I'm happy, and um, I have to have faith in myself that I can do enough of it or, or get uh, well known enough to where I can get a good income from it. But it, it it's something that. Um, it's something that you're doing what you want to do. And uh, I think that's what, what she's saying, that you lose that center and you're not going to be happy. So, so I gather what you're saying, though, you were so young, and I've talked to your parents also, <coughs> they indicated that, that it's really, it's a very young child that you were drawing in an extraordinary way compared with other children your age. Uh, if that be the case, is this kind of interest and kind of talent, actually, I just want you to theorize on this. Does, 
is it a talent that's given at birth that it just comes with you it's not you weren't even old enough to be uh, introduced to the educational process to art and, and so forth do you think right. that, i guess i'll ask in a very broad way do you think in almost all occupations where people turn out to be successful was that with them a long time or or, or do artists realize that in a way that other people have to more through education discover they want to be an attorney or a medical yeah. doctor i think it depends on how far you want to go um, every anybody who works at something hard enough they really want to do it say in the arts i think they can reach a certain level or at least um, it depends on what's important to you um, if if for example somebody wants to um, just do artwork just to express then that's great but i th i really think as far as taking a talent and going very far with it i think it's an inborn thing i really do but once you aware of course as you grow older that it's it's more and more intense i assume <clears throat> in you the desire to uh, to perform in the field of art when you went uh, to high school or maybe even more so when you made that decision you want to go to college to get more introduction to techniques and so forth uh, does that create even in the artist a greater appreciation of the potential of the person and what they want to do as far as far as what now if you I, i'm just thinking that you know you were already very involved in art before you decided to go to north Idaho college and pursue art but once you got into the classes and were introduced to some of the theories and and the history and development of art did that create an, another depth in you another appreciation yeah um you get um you know you get into college and to me college is a specialization at least it was for me and uh you know you get a broad view of um what's important is that if you know you're good at artwork but you're not yet sure what do you like to specialize in so it's college is so important in that it it allows you the chance to do it broad and, and it gives you the time to to maybe pick out what you'd like to just do specialize whatever be watercolor oils airbrush you know what I'm saying and yeah that was very important for me and, and it wasn't until the end actually um, my last year in college that I picked up the airbrush and uh and it was an immediate interest immediate and from then on i mean i'm i'm still doing the same thing actually so yeah if it you know it gave me that chance definitely i, I just wondering and of course different <clears throat> individuals might have different experiences but in your case some of the work you were already doing you you continued in that same vein or that same path is my understanding mm -hmm. but to some people when they introduce to all the different techniques do they take a, a major turn in their work and go in a different direction uh, I think they can. It, um, sometimes maybe it might depend on when you go. Like for me, I wasn't sure. I mean, I knew I was good in the artwork and I knew, um, well, I just didn't know what I wanted to specialize in. But then there could be other people who um, later on, they want to learn more about what that specialization is. So they'll just maybe go to college just to learn about watercolor, for example. But for me, it was very important that I got a broad view of it. You know. I'm going to ask you probably what's well, an unfair <clears throat> question, but I been known to do that <laughs> uh, you're young and you've, you've, you've concentrated we're going to take a look at some of your works obviously next week and at the end of today's program we're going to take a look at one sample of your work to interest people in being with us next week but do you think later in life that uh, as, as you've worked on this and developed that you'll stay pretty much in the same uh, area of work or do you think that you may branch out into different some artists through a whole life you can identify mm -hmm. that same technique all the way through and others have periods in their life of different kinds of art yeah I think um, what's been one of the things I really um, I, I've made a deliberate um, point to investigate other artists and, and see their background see through a particular time period if their artwork changed or if they did the same mm -hmm. and, I, I really think that if um, if your artwork does change, it's like your signature, your hand signature. If you, um, it's just it's recognizable, and, it's, and I think it's the same way a little bit in the artwork. Mm -hmm. Even though the artwork might change a little bit, um, you still can recognize things. If if you're really interested in an artist, there's things that stand out, and I think that. Uh, but as far as will I change, or if I think I'm going to change, I don't. I don't really know. I think. You know, yet I know that um, something sparks an idea, and I'll stay with it for a particular point in time. But then after a while, you, you know, it, it's important to to branch out a little bit. But I think I'll always stay with the airbrush as a medium. That, that's your signature. Exactly right. Your... Right. I right. think that's important that people recognize that. Again, for 
many of the viewers who are like myself and who are not in the field of art, and although I've attempted over the years to have an appreciation and had some, some background in history of art uh, when I was a student, um, there are a lot of different categories and uh, classifications of art. And when we were preparing to do this show, you were talking with me about the kind of, of classification you put to your work. I wish you would identify uh, your, what you call contemporary surrealism and no, and tell us what that is, and, and then compare it with some other kinds that you don't do that some other artists do. Sure. Well, contemporary, I mean, contemporary is just a modern type of artwork for a particular time period. Um, surrealism, actually, if you break it down, it's beyond realism. It's, it's the actual meaning of the word. Um, how I got into um, surrealism, or actually, I, mean, I do what I do because I, it's what I enjoy. Other people tend to put labels on it, and then it's, they say, well, you're doing surrealism, and I'll say, oh, well, all right, you know, from then on, it's, I do surrealism, you know, but I think to begin with, I, that wasn't in my head that I was going to be doing surrealism, or contemporary surrealism, but um, when I first did um, um, the, my first actual few pieces were definitely influenced from an artist who did who was labeled as contemporary visionary surrealism. And in visionary, you're, there's a lot of um, utopian type ideals. Uh, the older visionary surrealist, uh, Michelangelo, did a lot of uh, religious type things, you know, that everybody knows and, re and recognizes. But how I actually got into that was through an influence from an artist by the name of Wolfgang Gersh, who is uh, an artist in Oakland. And uh, in my, if, if you see his work, you'll see a lot of the influence in my work. Um, but that's basically how, I mean, it's from another artist. It wasn't that I actually studied specifically that. It was from the influence of another artist. And not only is there a certain technique, uh, like you identified, but even within that particular arena, some people concentrate on certain things, like in the case of religion. Uh, I know artists who, most all their work is uh, about animals. Mm -hmm. And I, I, there are individuals who are fascinated with uh, uh, the environment and so forth. I, I see a lot of what I call space uh, emphasis in your work, of, that, that maybe it's beyond the planet or the globe. Yeah. A am I reading that properly? Yeah, well, I think my work, I break my work down into two things. Uh, one from the influence of when I was younger and the influence of uh, um, astronomy, things that I've always had an extreme interest in that. And there's also a lot of uh, influence uh, techniques um, towards that influence from the, the artist Wolfgang that I told you about. Um, but uh, actually, um, when I was a kid and the astronomy, that definitely was my interest in that. And then the inspirational work that I call uh, The Sky's the Limit piece and a few other pieces. Um, that's, that's kind of how I break them down. Have you had that <coughs> division all the time, or is, is, is one, 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 you start with one, the other one has uh, become more of a part of your work? Now the inspirational type work, has, the contemporary, has definitely taken over, and I'll still do, still do a lot of the <coughs> astronomy type uh, pieces, but uh, the astronomy definitely was where I started out in, and it's branched off into these other pieces now. Mm -hmm. In an earlier conversation we had, we talked about uh, very much like a... a Another person that, that, that's gifted as a writer, people who write novels, oftentimes they finish a novel and they'll wait a period before they start another one. Some people start almost again immediately. Some writers indicate that as they finish a novel, out of that novel grows a second novel. Yeah. And sometimes it's a totally different vein that they're working in. And I know you <clears throat> had this experience, but you share with our viewers, you know, how do you create these pieces? Uh, next week <clears throat> we're going to look at 15 of, of, of your works. And, one of them is very, very different than the other ones. It's the political piece that we'll mm -hmm. be uh, stressing. Where do they come from? And how do you decide it's now time to create this particular painting? Oh, um, a lot of times um, it starts out, um, like for example, when in, at college I was taking a lot of graphic arts classes and the teacher used to tell us, if you want to come up with ideas, um, the best thing you can do is thumb through magazines. Just thumb through magazines and uh, you know, come up with other ideas for logos that will spark another idea with you. So what I've done, kind of the same process, but a lot of times I'll, I'll like to see other artists work to inspire me. Um, 
just whether it's in magazines or going to a gallery, so many times for artists that'll spark an idea. And it has nothing to do with copying or anything like that. I'm just talking about getting some inspiration going. And through that inspiration, you're going to get ideas. And because you know what it is you want to express deep down. And a lot of times for a particular piece, I'll do uh, five, six, maybe even ten sketches before I come up with one idea. And as far as um, going from one idea to another, a lot of times I'll do a piece and I'll get four or five more pieces from that idea. You know, it, they'll, they'll grow. I'll, I'll get a lot of And you'll see that. You'll see the, the relation from one piece with a lot of others. But that's uh, nine times out of ten, that's how I'll get the majority of my ideas. When that happens and you have a, a piece that's powerful to you, and maybe four or five come out of that, but do you reach a point where you've kind of exhausted that particular theme and then, then all at once yeah. you're yeah. Uh, moved to do something somewhat different? Definitely. Um, usually, um, sometimes it'll be just a couple, three pieces. Sometimes it'll take me ten pieces to get that out of my system. Uh -huh. but, and once I do, uh, a lot of times I'll look back and maybe it's something I did six months ago and I'll say, I don't, you know, it's not even that great, I don't like <laughs> it. And other people are, you know, I'll, you know, I'll take it. But, um, Definitely, it, it varies how I'll, you know, usually I'll just get sick and tired of looking at it. Or it what it is, is you're constantly improving, constantly trying to get out other ideas. So after I've exhausted that, it's time to do something new. I know you've been working real hard because I've talked to you a lot <clears throat> in recent weeks, and you've had a real intense commitment. And I would say over the last, what, four to six months, I mean, I, I know your, your work's beginning to show, and it, recently at the mm -hmm. Art on the Green in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Mm -hmm. uh, your works were there, some of your works, and you've also uh, had success now uh, very, very quickly after mm -hmm. starting your work with selling some of your work. Uh, this particular intense period you've had, do you anticipate that to continue, or are you going to have lulls in between this intensity? Oh, I have to. I have to think positive, Tony. I mean, it's, it's going to go through the roof, definitely. Mm -hmm. It has to. Uh, as, as we say in some other fields, you're hooked on it, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Gary, there's another area I want to get into that just absolutely fascinated me. I was very fascinated when you and I talked about this uh, at a previous uh, meeting that we had. And I'm not saying this because you're on the program. I, too, attend art galleries, and we all are different, and what strikes us of, as of interest is in someone else's work is varies from person to person. And, I think we all see art that we don't maybe appreciate like we should, or it's for someone else other than us. But when I saw your work, I was really taken by it, and I, I, it, to me, it's just very powerful, and it appeals to some ideas and philosophies I have. And as I told you at the time when I saw it, it seemed to call out for music. It just, it's just something that struck me that way. And with that in mind, I want to ask you that there, it seems to me that there are some artists they work very, very hard at trying to make their message very clear to you. They're wanting mm -hmm. to communicate with you. Other artists' work may be just as great, but somehow there's something hidden. They don't seem to be communicating with you. A am I correct that that is a possibility, or would you explain this difference in how one uh, reads or interprets other art? In my opinion, um, y you've got uh, so many artists doing artwork for so many different reasons, and you'll go into a gallery with somebody, and, and you'll see a particular piece, and Everybody's even joked about a lot of type Picasso type pieces with three years on one side or whatever it is. And you'll say, well, I just don't understand what he's trying to say. But what's important to note is that um, for myself, I do artwork because I'll do something that inspires me and I want other people to see and understand what, what it is I did, why I did it. You know, it's important for me that somebody knows. So you're really working at getting your message through exactly. in your work. Exactly, right. And, it, and I think with some artists, it's, that's not important. I think what's important to them is that they're doing it because it's a, it's a form of expression for the artist alone. And it's not important that somebody knows what he meant. What was important for that artist is that he's doing what he enjoys, and it's a way of expression. So you have so many different reasons why. So it's, it's not important that um, you always have to know what a particular piece means, you know. just to understand why the artist maybe does that himself. So, but for the artists that are in your category, and you really want the message across, and so your work is up, and you're standing by the side, and someone comes through, and, and they look at it, and they get the message. 
I, I've watched you enough to know this, that really pleases you. So oh, yeah. you, you get a special enjoyment from that. Another artist who's more introverted and, 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 and focused inward in that process, and someone comes along and doesn't, that artist doesn't react in the same way that you do. In other words, that artist is not troubled or bothered by that fact that the message mm -hmm. has not come through. Um, well, I mean, if somebody, if, if I can see somebody get a lot of appreciation out of a particular piece of artwork of mine, that is by far the greatest reason why I would do it. I mean, that is, that's where the excitement is, that's where the enjoyment and the payoff that somebody, you know, can appreciate and understand or see something. And a lot of times, somebody will see something else that maybe I never even thought about it. In your work. And that's very exciting. I mean, I'll, I'll say, oh, yeah, I, I never thought of that, you know, that you see that in the, in the work, and that's, that's really interesting. But, so there's, there's been a lot of different aspects of my work. I mean, I've, I've done a particular piece of artwork um, for you know, a specific reason, and then other, other people maybe see it for that reason, or, or they have a lot of other things that they see in the work. That's been really exciting. I was going to ask a question on that line. I have a friend who is uh, an artist who does love abstract work, and he, I think, is, is very ingenious in doing that, and it's almost, I don't know if this is a proper way to put it out, but is trying to be clever in the sense that as different people, I've been present when different people would look at the work, and they would get a totally different message from that, each one of them. And he was laughing and seemed like overjoyed that he almost deliberately created a piece to allow different interpretation. Mm -hmm. Now, your work is not that way to that same extent, but uh, yeah. don't, don't some artists even try to send lots of messages through the same piece? Sure, yeah, definitely. Um, it, it goes back to what I was saying and the reasons for an artist wanting to express his artwork. And for a long time, like you say, abstract, I, I used to have a, a really, um, I don't know, very indifferent about what I thought about abstract, for one thing, because I didn't understand it. And I want to know, well, why did he do that? I don't understand it all. But now I have a completely different look at that. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's having an appreciation in, of what that artist is doing. And it's like you say, um, a lot of times they'll do that deliberately just to maybe get people riled up. And that's, that's great, you know. Nothing you're thinking. Thank you. Another thing in your work is color. And again, uh, I've seen most of your work, and it seems that you emphasize certain colors, that certain colors dominate your thinking, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're very aware of that. Would you like to tell the audience, even before they see the work next week, what, what colors are prominent for you, and why have you chosen those particular colors? Well, I use acrylic, acrylic uh, water-based airbrush, and it, the reason I choose that is because they're very, very vibrant, clean colors. And for the messages I like to bring out, I like them to see something that's very clean, very vibrant, and that's important. Um, I use a lot of, uh, the dominant colors would be blue. I use a lot of sky scenes <clears throat> in my work. Um, there's a lot of uh, maroon, there's a lot of, uh, oh, uh, a lot of uh, indifferences with white. Um, but that's, that's mainly, and I don't think that there's a definite reason that I, I pick it out. It's just that naturally those are the colors that you know I've, I've chosen to use and they're they're dominant in all of my work. Wouldn't that part of that domination possibly be too though because a lot of your work has to do with as she says you go back <clears throat> with your interest in uh, astronomy and there's a lot of what I get out of your work is a lot of space and out in space and and even though you're using certain objects in relation to that you're thinking along the terms of yeah. it's the blues and the whites that uh, one sure. finds in that environment. Yeah, and I'll, well, and I'll, I'll deliberately choose um, specific types of color also in combination with um, using with black and with the astronomy type pieces, something that really stands out. Um, and with, um, with the acrylic, I mean, almost any of the colors I use stand out, but it, it's, I think you're right, it, it, it probably is, uh, has a lot to do with why I use these blues and, and it, it uh, correlates really well with the space and astronomy type pieces. I, I, I'm guessing, but uh, you'll correct me if I'm wrong. I, I've looked at your works, and some are larger, and some are smaller, and, and, and some are <clears throat> much more detailed than others uh, appear to be. Uh, so I assume that as you're working on different pieces, and you can get that idea and comes forth, that some pieces uh, come together and are finished much more rapid. Some are much longer. To tell us a little bit about the time involvement, and are there, 
are there, has there been a piece or two that just really took a lot of time? Um, well, your political piece, Tony, um, probably out of all of them took the longest. But that had a lot of meaning. I mean, that was really the first piece I ever did that had that really had a message that I wanted to bring across. It is definitely a, a pioneer piece for me. And uh, it, um, it took, you're looking at at least a month and a half, two months. That's from idea to finished product. And, it, and it, it, with the way I do things, there's a lot of overlays. And uh, you'll shoot a, a color, time to draw another overlay. Um, so it, it, you know, it really changes. Like sky scenes don't take me quite as long because I'm, I'm not dealing with uh, overlays. So the more detail, the more overlay, the more time. And you're looking at um, anywhere from two days, now that's, you know, from coming up with an idea to a finished product, depending on if I have the materials ready or not. And when you uh, say two days, is that pretty constant throughout those two days? I'd say uh, it's average for the simpler pieces. Um, they can go um, anywhere from that to a month, but probably average, average in between yeah. about a week. I promised our viewers that uh, We'd have you back next week, which we will, and we're going to show uh, 15 different pieces that you've brought to the studio uh, for us to view as we do that program. Uh, but we have one piece that we're going to show as we go off the air today in, a, in just a minute. And I, I want to let the viewers know that that's a sample of your work, and I hope they'll come back next week, and particularly who, people who love art, to get a chance setting in their homes or their office, wherever they may be, uh, to get a, a kind of like they're in an art gallery, a view of all your work. and. I hope they have the appreciation that we have done. Uh, I think you know the piece that we're going to show uh, to the oh. audience. And so maybe in, in a minute they will be switching and uh, I will close out the thing that we thank our viewers for being with us today and hope you'll be with us again next week at the same time when we'll be showing Gary Hall the artist's work on our show. But as we're getting ready to leave and they'll cut to the piece, I would like for you to describe a little bit about this particular uh, painting that we have here today to show our audience. If you just go ahead and do that. Um, it's, um, it's called the title of Sky's the Limit. Um, it's, a, uh, it's all acrylic. It's all airbrush. Um, and there's a lot of uh, what I call raw color that I use in it. There's a sweeping uh, motion that I use. Um, and it's my first inspirational piece. Okay, Gary, thank you for being with us today so much. And I want to again thank the audience for being with us. And we invite you to be with us again next week at this same time. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. North Idaho College Public Forum is videotaped live by Telemedia Services on the campus of North Idaho College for viewing at this more appropriate time. We invite you to catch the North Idaho College Public Forum the same time next week on this television station. From the college by the lake, meeting the personalities and discussing the issues that affect all of Coeur d'Alene and the Inland Northwest. We are the North Idaho College Public Forum. And now, here's your moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. Welcome to the North Idaho College Public Forum. For you who were with us last week, I indicated that we were starting our 20th year of broadcast, which is a very exciting milestone for us on this program. And I want to, this week to announce and welcome to our production, Lindy Turner, who is the new executive producer of our program. We're delighted to have him with us. At one time he was a student at North Idaho College and went away and finished his education and also a lot of experience. And we're just simply delighted to have him with us. He's a very professional and a Lindy, welcome on board. I want to welcome back today to our program our guest from last week, Mr. Gary Hall, who is an artist. And as you know, for you who are watching last week, uh, he discussed the field of art, paintings, and we had a great discussion. And I promised at that time that he would come back to show us some of his work. Uh, we're very pleased that Gary has brought with him today uh, 15 pieces uh, of uh, the work that he has done, and he's done more than that. And Gary, we're so delighted to have you here. We're in a few minutes are going to go through that and uh, let the viewers here in the Northwest um, and in our 
joining country Canada take a look at your work. But before we actually look at the first of uh, these 15 pieces, I would like to uh, once again just ask you to share with our viewers um, what it's like to be at this point uh, in the success of your work. As I indicated last week, you've sold some pieces already. Uh, you've had a, a showing, and now you're here on our program. And you've been building to this, and you indicated last week, even from a little boy, that you had um, liked to draw and work. And this realization that's come forth now, express that to our viewers. Well, it's very exciting. Um, this is such a great opportunity for me even to do the show. Um, it's, uh, it is just, uh, it's been really taking off. I've uh, finally gotten to the point where I can start getting uh, slides and my work out and showing it and this is, uh, this show alone has been a, a real big milestone for me. Now as we get ready in a moment to show the first uh, piece of your work, <clears throat> I had indicated to you when I saw it sometime earlier that I would like for you to tell our viewers the title of it. And we're going to use music, which is kind of unusual in, in the, uh, an art show, even on a program like this. So the viewers should be aware there'll be music in the background uh, uh, that you have chosen uh, to give an uh, underscoring of the importance of uh, the information that you're going to share. I think of it like a, taking a highlighter and reading a book, and the music highlights some, some important okay. messages that you're getting across. At this time, I think we are ready uh, in our studio to invite you to share with the audience uh, the first painting. Okay, this first piece is uh, entitled uh, Sky's the Limit. Um, it's, uh, it's my first inspirational piece and it's the first time I really started using what they call juxtapositions in the work. Um, juxtapositions are, as you can see, um, looks like objects floating above uh, whatever uh, it is you're working on canvas. This is uh, a really good uh, Strathmore board that I'm using here. Um, and it's, it's the first piece that had a lot of meaning for me and a, a piece that I wanted other people to, uh, to see that. It's, uh, this is a really exciting piece for me, really exciting. And, and was this one of the earlier ones that you did in, uh, uh, in, in your work? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the first what I call inspirational pieces. It's, um, so many pieces have come out of that one, so many. Uh, other works have come out of that very right, first one. Because right. we would indicated last week that sometimes that does happen with you. Right, yeah. And then other times I assume you do a piece and that doesn't. Okay, would you share the next one with us? This one is, uh, as you can see, it's a takeoff from Sky's Limit. Uh, it's titled uh, Stretch Your Limitations. It's uh, very close, same uh, along the lines of the title. Um, it's just another way of expressing uh, kind of the same idea. And like I said, so many things come out of one idea. and so all these ideas, um, just I'll, I'll be sketching down um, 10, 15 ideas from that one sky's the limit, and this is this is one of them. Really exciting piece. You really brought something to mind with this particular piece uh, when you talk about stretching your limits. You've put that in, on the canvas. Uh, you're sharing that with an audience, uh, but it has it affected your life. That is, once you do something like this, does it mean that? Uh, that maybe not only in your painting, but in other things that you do in life, that you're more willing to take on challenges. Sure. Well, it's, it's actually things that uh, I now that have been excited about, and I'm showing them through the artwork. You know? And so, but uh, does it give you more incentive to do other things where you have challenges? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And you're hoping, I assume, that that carries over to other people who come through and enjoy your work. Exactly. That's where the, a lot of the joy is with the work. Okay, next please. Follow Your Dreams is the title of this piece. And it's the third of my first inspirational pieces. And of course it's a lot, the, I've been experimenting a lot with the, a lot of the colors that I use that I call raw color. It's acrylic that I, uh, that kind of, it's floating, but it also looks like it's been uh, shot across the, the sky along, as, just as the other two pieces. And uh, that's another experiment with the same idea. Close title. Uh, give me a little more explanation what you mean about uh, shooting across the sky. I mean, you can see it in there, but there's, this painting has a lot of movement, doesn't it? Yeah, I use it, it's uh, I use a wide palette, and there's uh, it's expensive because, of course, the paint using paint raw like that, and just going through practices, you know, I mean, you can go through a lot of paint, um, but that's it, I'm using a palette actually, and I'm and I'm 
I'm starting at one point and bringing it across and I'm controlling it with uh, stencils. Sometimes it, you don't get it just like you want and then you start over, but it has to be, right, it has yeah. to be just right for you. I've ruined it? a lot of good pieces that way also. <laughs> yeah, would you be close to even being through and then uh, have to start right, over? Right, that's the last thing I do is with the, on these yeah. particular type of pieces. I see. Okay, uh, we have another painting here. Um, this one is entitled Imparting Illumination. Um, this was, a lot of times I'll do a piece, uh, the mood I'm in, I'll do something that, uh, oh, when things are really taking off, and this is, this is a way of showing expansion um, and uh, using a lot of the same ideas as the, uh, well, it's, it's another inspirational piece. When you, when you say that it's a way of showing expansion, what do you mean by expansion? Well, because that's kind of at the point that I'm at right now. I'm growing and I'm expanding with not only with what I want to do with my life uh, as far as the artwork goes, but uh, each piece, I mean, is getting better and better and it's expanding. And this was um, an idea that, um, I mean, the piece actually came out of that way of thinking. So it's almost like between pieces that you're stopping to say, I'm expanding and it's going to even get Right, more exactly. and more exciting. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Exciting intervention. We've had a lot of that. That's the name of this next. Right. Piece. The, the, we've had a lot of in Coeur d'Alene a lot of uh, um, really brilliant uh, um, lightning storms, and that is what started this piece for me. Um, it's just it's a way of uh, there's a lot of uh, symbolism in the the triangle actually is. Uh, to me, um, is, is life. The uh, behind it, I, I show the granite actually cracking the power of the of the lightning coming through, and uh, it all started with uh, a few nights ago when we when we had some of those really interesting lightning storms. So this is a very very recent piece. Very that, recent piece. Uh, yes. But this has been at least the time of taping this program. We have had some summer storms. Uh, I hear in that message that also. You're very tied to the environment. It's within the environment, you know, the, the lightning. In other case, you're talking about uh, interest in astronomy and the sky and all. Right. Yeah. You're very influenced by the natural, physical environment around you in your work, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. Well, there's. I admire the awesomeness of it. Um, there's, like, for example, with the with the lightning. Um, it's when that hit the other night. It's like uh, it shows you just how little you really are. You know what I mean? And, and I wanted to show that kind of uh, right. power within the work. Thank yeah. you. It's the expansiveness of, of, of where we are in the universe, but we are such a small, exactly, microscopic right. Right. part of that as individuals. Right. Okay. This is know, a, what's the title of this uh, piece? Ways of Direction is the title. Um, it's got some juxtapositions with kind of naturalistic type objects, and of course the color. And this is at a point, uh, this is a, my way of expressing uh, through design, um, different uh, directions in your life. I noticed in that piece that you have some, you know, again, a lot of blue, but in this one it seems like that you have emphasized two types of blue. You have a very dark and then a very light uh, blue in this, this piece. Yeah, uh, I want to create some intensity and yet uh, show it gradually. You know? uh -huh. And th then you've, in, you've brought in along with, the, with those blues in, in, in the forefront with a, a very different color of pink and all. Right. Does, does that, is that highlighting a certain thing? Well, you need, you know, you, you have so much of the blue, you, and with other pieces, you need that contrast. You, you need sometimes a really nice, intense pink or color. It has to blend well, but you need that contrast in artwork, I think. Uh, it makes it so interesting. It makes it interesting, and it draws attention. Do you try sometimes with one of these paintings to draw attention to a particular part of the painting more than others, to cause people to come in on a certain one? Um, yeah, I'll, there, there's always, or I try and always make a center of attention, okay. but not to overshadow the other, the other parts, making them not, not as interesting. Not to lose there's always an, a certain a center of attention somewhere. Okay. At least in colors, the next one, uh, <coughs> painting that you're going to talk about has, I think, some contrast to some of the other work you've done. This uh, piece is entitled Infused. Um, infused is basically, or, or my understanding of it and, and um, why I entitle it that, is when um, you take in something, whether it's schooling or an experience in life, you're always affected and you come out of it a better person. And that's the whole idea of this piece, something that's, that's positive. There's energy coming through. The sphere is a universal object. Um, it can mean anything. Um, so it, there's something that's, that's, that's better coming out of 
another experience or from an experience. And when you're saying infused, that can come from any walk of life you're in or any uh, person sure, you can, in your life sure. or, or you any related to occupation. Or whatever it might be. Yeah, sure. That, that one becomes really flexible then, doesn't it? Because each person can read in whatever's been meaningful in their life. Uh, right, exactly. And that's, that's the whole thing with the artwork. If somebody, if somebody can see something, an aspect of their life through the artwork, that's, for me, that's exciting. That's fantastic. L l everyone gets to celebrate whatever's important to them that way. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay, we're going to move to, uh, again, some real distinct features in, in your next work. This is a positive alignment, and as you stated earlier, you talked about it, uh, last week you talked about it, uh, an artist who, who uh, felt um, out of whack in a way when she wasn't aligned, when she wasn't, she's doing an art, her artwork, she's aligned with herself, and this piece is about that, it's about aligning yourself with, with what your talent or your, what gives you joy in your life, it's a positive alignment is, is the whole idea behind this piece. I would sense in this particular piece that when you did it, uh, and again, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but uh, were you aligned in, in, in some, something very special in relation that brought that piece out at that moment? Did the um, timing have to be right? Actually, it was just a buildup of a lot of things in, in what I've been learning and, uh, you know, in knowing what I need to be doing with my life and with my artwork, you know, staying aligned with what it is you want to do. I, I just can't resist asking. That, that when you first started your first paintings, would you have done this, or did you need to do a certain amount before you felt the aligned to to do that? Kind well, it's of work? it's of course it's, it's very scary when you're doing. Uh, when I started a lot of these pieces, um, or th this particular cycle of pieces, um, I really started in things that I, I really didn't know where my direction was, and and like we talked about, as things built up, you know, the more aligned I became, and and I knew that's this is what's making me happy, and and. That's kind of how the piece came out of being. I guess part of my excitement is that as you grow and more and more is happening, there may be pieces there that are going to be really comprehensive as you have more and more experience to, mm -hmm. uh, to bring those into focus. Absolutely. Okay. This is an interesting piece here. Um, it's entitled uh, Heraldo's View. Now, there's a, there was a, a lady that uh, I knew very well who uh, inspired me at one point to get back into my artwork when I had stopped for a while. And uh, she's, uh, she always called my, my name Gary in Spanish is Geraldo. And so it's kind of a, a remembrance of her and what she would call me Geraldo every now and then. And so um, I titled, this is the scenery of this piece is something, it, it shows the astronomy, the, the little lookout there. And, and uh, it kind of shows a little bit about me. So I, the title both expresses me and were the inspiration first to start my artwork. So this is a very, this is a very early piece, one of my very first pieces. But, but so you're indicating that in a piece like this, you're bringing more of yourself out right. than you are in yeah. some other pieces. Right. Uh, also, is there is there some uh, dedication to her because exactly, she was an right. important part of that process? That's right. Both so. exactly. It's uh, inspiration. It shows a little bit of me, and and uh, it's a dedication in a way. Yeah. Isn't there another lesson here in life that? We all, as we struggle through life and want to do certain things, that there are individuals who make that more possible by being there sure. and being encouraging everybody and Everybody touches everybody else in so many ways. We did sure. a show with some very special people who talked about connectedness of people around the mm -hmm. world. And here's an example of that. I find the next work that you're going to describe, uh, again, a contrast from somebody that's just very, very impressive to me. And seems, there seems to be some very uh, deep message in this particular work. This piece is entitled uh, Outer Spectrum Inner Growth. Um, it's a piece that I did um, for a man who did a lot of uh, work for me and uh, he's been going through a lot of changes himself and so that, that's a little bit of influence that went into the piece and yet it reflects me also because it it's, shows my interests and things and so, so it's a way of um, in a way, another dedication type piece, yet it, it tells a lot about me and my interests. Maybe that's one of your signatures, you can tell in some of these pieces. It seems to me that, and she was so willing to share with us, that when you're personally expressing yourself or people who have helped and all, your painting takes on, it's still got your signature, but it takes on a little different form than some of these more spacious and open, uh, just of the environment and, and right. those kind of things. Right. And There's so an unlimitedness that I want to show in my work. 
you know, and it's, and it's really easy to do that using a lot of these space scenes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very dramatic and it's it's unlimited. It's the distance, you know. We have here uh, this piece, I believe, is uh, I titled Eclipse. Um, it's another one of these pieces where um, one or an idea has come out of an, you know a single piece, and uh, this is uh, one of many where I'm using. And actually, this is one of the first pieces that I've used uh, the color, and the color I use strictly for not only uh, to bring out the intensity of some of the blues and reds, but it's also a very strong contrast. And so, when you deal with, with clips, are you, what are some of the other things that you're expressing about both other people or, or beyond one's own sphere? Oh, I would say um, showing, um, going past your own, uh, or at least um, my way of expressing through design um, what I would like other people to see as far as going beyond what you can do, um, going after what you want to do. And it's all, it's all unlimited and uh, it shows a lot of my artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it may be highlighted more in some piece or another, but it's, it's really there in a lot. Mm -hmm. Your work is very much oriented towards messages for individuals. <clears throat> I keep hearing you talk about both internal and external messages, both for, the, for yourself or other individuals, mm -hmm. and then how one reaches out to, into the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's a way of, um, actually it's a way of, um, I can, it's kind of a, oh, I, I know what it is, uh, what inspires me. And uh, I can, you know, I can show others, or you want us to see that, mm -hmm. you know, and I can do it through my artwork. Okay. Our, uh, our next work here? This is actually, this is a, a study piece I did. It's untitled. Um, it was a piece where I was experimenting with a lot of different uh, new uh, ways of stenciling. And, and, um, and of course, this was um, one of my first pieces where I was creating that, uh, um, a little bit of difference, adding the color shooting through at the bottom. So, so some works do not have the same kind of identification. Others, like you know, some of them, it, it comes to you very clearly what to call them. Others, you're you're working with mm -hmm. in, a, in a more different and abstract way. If we can get them to remove that piece, then we'll move on to uh, take a look at work because we don't have much time left, and we want to see some of your other work that you have done. Uh, they're going to put up now uh, one that's rather large. I know again. The, the canvas mm -hmm. now really varies with you and the kind and sizes you do uh, with work. And so I assume that has something to do with the theme and the message you're trying to get for Well, this, this piece was actually, in a way, I, I entitled this one uh, Negative Space. And it was kind of a, another study type piece. It wasn't really any kind of particular point I was bringing across with it other than just uh, showing something uh, dramatic or... Um, I was experimenting with a lot of things, and this is what uh, start, a lot of the interest started with this piece. This is another uh, very early piece that I did. Uh -huh. And so we're not actually showing the works, you know, in the order that you did them, or uh, so. Some of them, uh, well, some of them um, are um, beginning pieces. Yet um, I've gone back. You know, I've done a lot of study pieces, but as time has gone on, I've taken things from older pieces to create um, new ideas and maybe to even to expand on old pieces. Uh -huh. And sometimes ideas. do you go back to uh, something that you've left a while and, and something else comes out of that? Again? Yeah, we all see maybe um, a whole new potential of way of doing that from that particular idea of an old piece. Uh -huh. Definitely. Okay. This one uh, is entitled Open-Minded View. And uh, it's one of the first times that it's not actually a juxtaposition, but it's actually uh, two of the same ways of seeing a scenery um, and uh, keeping that contained. And it creates a really nice contrast, um, especially with the, the colors. It uh, really creates some strong uh, definitions. They are, aren't they? And, 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 and you do underscore that with color, because I see in this a lot more dark. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's given certain kinds of emphasis, isn't it? Right, right. This is uh, also, this was, like I was saying, it, it's an idea where I was 
some inspirational ideas, looking back at some old pieces and bringing that into um, you know, a new idea. And so that was, that was the way of, of this open-minded view piece was one of those first pieces where I you know, took an old idea or, or things, study pieces that I worked on and I'm now putting a lot of things together and this was the result of one of them. When you talk about open-minded, are you, is there almost a political message here that you're suggesting well, people... Well, uh, you're looking, if people who have an open mind have the ability to see what others can't see. You're looking, maybe looking at the same thing, but they see another aspect or they see deeper into it. And, and that, was, that was really what I wanted to do. Well, that's going to move us into this very serious political piece, which is very <laughs> different from the other work you've done. And we might spend a little time on this and tell us, this is really a political piece. We ha it? Yes, I have to emphasize this is a political piece. This can be taken both ways, but I think when you really look at the symbolism within the piece, the eyes, it's something that, it's not, I entitled it, it's a political piece, but there isn't a definite title because I want everybody to get their own opinion of it, but it is, on my part, it, it is a positive piece. It's not made to be a negative piece. It's a scary image, and yet it's bringing out a, a positive statement, very positive statement that, um, well, I mean, just look at some of the symbolism within it. And uh, whether you relate that to times that are happening now or in the past, World War II, there's a lot you can, you can get out of that. I, I look at this piece, too, as a, a global piece. I was very impressed you know, as someone who's in political science when I saw it, and you, <laughs> you, you've almost sometimes described this as a piece that Tony <laughs> really likes, but I, I see a lot of that symbolism in there about almost the history of the human race and yeah. it's, there's been much peace and there's been violence and there's been turmoil and there's been through that process change and so... Uh, well it's a reminder, I mean it, it's a, it, you need, people forget and you need, you need that reminder, and this is a very strong visual reminder of what you can lose, whether you, whether you consider that losing freedom um, or, you know, anything along those life. lines. Life? Exactly. exactly. Are, are there are people who have obviously sacrificed their life for their ideology and principles, in our case, democracy. And I, and I particularly, when I look at the piece, the first thing that uh, got my attention, although I went through a lot of different uh, symbols in it, was, were the eyes and the Statue of mm -hmm. Liberty there. Uh, and that being within a skeleton thing, that there are sometimes great prices that one pays exactly. uh, for uh, what, what everyone believes in and the commitment. And, mm -hmm. and that now, at a time when we live, re don't forget who may have paid certain prices for exactly. that. Exactly, and that is a lot of that, is, that influence alone um, that was put on me. And what you're saying is that had a lot to do with um, why I did that piece. Yes. Well, I, I just find that one very, very powerful and, and find it very different from some of the other work that you've done. Well, Gary, we've been able to go through your work uh, and very much appreciate you bringing those pieces with you uh, because I think that it's through that work that it really connects and ties to last week's show when you were talking about yourself and how you try to work and, and for our viewers to get a chance to see it. It was absolutely essential. That's why I thought it was necessary to have two shows. It takes 30 minutes to talk about you and, and, mm -hmm. and, and who you are and how you feel and then to show the work. We have a little time left and I'd like to talk a little bit about the future. And uh, again, first I congratulate you on what you're Thank doing. Thank you very much. Encourage you to keep up the work because uh, what you're doing it, it creates an excitement in many of the rest of us and I hope you know how much that uh, it helps us to appreciate one of the qualities in life. Mm -hmm. Where are you going from here uh, in your work? And, Right now, it's a matter of expanding. I, w I want to uh, get it out. I, you have to. Uh, you have to be. You can, you can, I don't want to get entrapped and staying contained to one area. I want to. At this point, I just want to be able to. I've got a, quite a few pieces put put together, and I want to gradually increase them. You know, but uh, maybe not at the level I've been doing. But my attention now has to go towards uh, just um, trying to get my work out there and, ha and have it seen. I had lunch yesterday with an artist, and she is just a very gifted person, and she indicated that she wanted to talk about something called quality of life, and she felt that had to do with, of course, having employment and having a beautiful environment in which to live, uh, to education, but she also said the arts and the humanities was such an essential part of a person enjoying uh, all aspects of life, and so 
I'd like to suggest that you're contributing in one of those areas that's so, with many other artists with mm -hmm. something that is really, really important that Thank you. we can become too narrow and uh, we can spend all of our time on our job or, and uh, get what we call tunnel vision. So exactly. uh, I, I guess I have another question on that line is when one is involved in art and, and that work, does it give you a chance to maybe take a different look at life than the rest of us saying you're always looking for something mm -hmm. to send your message? Yeah, it does. Um, it's you have to have, you know, at the same time, it's very frightening to do what you want to do. And at the same time, um, life is very short. So, you, you yes. know, why not? And for me, it's artwork. But it is risky, isn't it? Because you're, you're, you're yeah, doing absolutely. something, you're, you're, you're putting out here in front of people to say, you have to judge this. You're always being judged. Uh, and and yeah. you have to be ready for criticism as well as compliments. And that's why I want to I be very broad about it. I, you know, if, if a particular um, person doesn't like it, that's fine. I'll take it on. And, because there's always there's, there's always more out there, you know. But with some risk in life, there is more opportunity <laughs> to really expand, isn't there? Absolutely. I know that when the conversation we had earlier, you, you were expressing that to me that you're saying that, uh, you know, here I am, here I'm out here in my work and so forth. Mm -hmm. Well, on behalf of our staff and uh, uh, those who have helped us put this together, I want to express our appreciation to you for coming for two weeks and Thank you. showing your work, and we do wish you really good luck in what you're doing. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest for the past two weeks has been Gary Hall, who is the artist in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and we know you've enjoyed the program and his expressions through his work. And I'd like to encourage you this year to write to us throughout the year during our 20th uh, year in its celebration and give us some suggestions of things you'd like to see done during the, that 20th uh, season. And we'd like to invite you to be with us again to next week at this very same time when we will discuss what we believe to be a very important issue until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. North Idaho College Public Forum is videotaped live by Telemedia Services on the campus of North Idaho College for viewing at this more appropriate time. We invite you to catch the North Idaho College Public Forum the same time next week on this television station.